I'm Mathis Wackernagel. I'm with Global Footprint Network. We are a think tank on sustainability to measure resources, how much we use, how much we have. What we need is good metric for any city. The key driver is how can we have great lives for everybody and also power them. So it's great lives on the one hand and resource security on the other. How is the ecological footprint different country by country and how can we apply it to cities as well? Obviously, like countries with higher income typically also have higher consumption, higher demand, but it also depends on what kind of an energy system they have. Is it very coal dependent, for example, or does it use more renewables? That makes a big difference in, their, uh, in, in, in the footprint component for the energy. Uh, so we have countries like, for example, Switzerland, where I grew up, uses about uh, threefold what is available per capita worldwide. The United States about fourfold more but then the United States also has more biocapacity because it's a very resource-rich country than, for example, Switzerland, which is a more highly uh, urbanized, dense, densely populated country uh, that has even less biocapacity per person than the world as a whole. We can do the same calculation for cities. We have done that for a number of cities. I think about 200 cities or more, 250 cities or so, have calculated their ecological footprint in the past and can come to the conclusion how much does it take to support a city and typically it's much more obviously than just the city itself occupies because they need resources uh, from, from many places but for example if you look at a country like Athens, Athens alone its resource demand exceeds the entire biocapacity of Greece. How can the ecological footprint be used for cities, whether they are in a high-income country, low-income country, middle-income country, mountainous country, landlocked country. Uh, th the same metabolism applies to any city, so we can find out what does it take to support this city. Why is that important? In order to have a successful future, we need to have two things. Obviously, we need to have great lives in this city, but then, as importantly, we need to have the resources to power the city in the long run. And so it becomes increasingly important in a world of resource constraints and climate change to understand for a city what's the resource requirement for our city, where does it come from, how exposed are we compared to what's available worldwide or within our country. How does the ecological footprint compare to other matrices to understand a city's performance? Obviously it just asks one particular question, how much nature do we use? compared to how much nature we have available. That's one particular question that is important if you want to understand resource security of a city, but obviously it doesn't tell anything about how well people live, if they're happy in the city, etc. So there need, need to be many other complementary measures as well. But overall, in the end, we need to add it up to one big thing and say, how much does it take overall compared to what is available? And that's the particular niche that the ecological footprint occupies. Of course, as we perform calculations, there are always data limitations. Uh, with more data, we could always be more detailed and more specific. But nevertheless, with the data that already exists, for example, through the UN system, we can get a first approximation of how much we use compared to how much is available. City by city, the data is not as consistent as nation by nation. Uh, so the comparability between cities may not be as strong. But then by using local data, we can also make it more specific to the city's particular concerns. What's the difficulties for countries or cities to adopt more data-driven, evidence-based, science-based decision-making? Obviously, science is a great, it's a great operating platform to build consensus of understanding what's really happening and what we need to do and to help build consensus on where we need to go. With more data, that becomes more easy, but I think the process is not just data, but it starts with understanding where do we want to go. So it's the questioning process of science that I think is at the core of that. And then once we know where we need to go, then we know, can also find out how much effort do we have available to find the necessary data. So more important is to go about in the right direction than precisely in the wrong one. So focus on the question. That's the most important piece. The World Resource Institute is an amazing institution holding this very question 
on which humanity's future depends, a question of resource security. How can we have sufficient resources to drive our economies? Understanding that in more detail, making it applicable to city governments, but also to nations or to the finance industry, is incredibly important and I think underestimated by the word. And so I salute uh, WRI for being there and saying we need to make, take care of our resources if you want to have a successful future.